Hey, Startup Nation, this is Dr. Carol. I'm just here, wanted to give you guys some helpful tips and things to remember as we move and navigate through this unprecedented uh, health pandemic. The first thing you guys want to remember is please wash your hands thoroughly and frequently. Wash your hands for at least 20 seconds under warm water with soap. If you do not have access to a sink with warm water and soap, please use hand sanitizer um, that contains at least 60% alcohol. The next thing you want to do is please avoid large crowds and social gatherings. As young people, our immune systems are typically healthier and so we can be asymptomatic, which basically means that we can carry uh, the virus if we come in contact with it and our immune system will recover. But we also pose the risk of spreading it to those who are immunocompromised or who have chronic health conditions and our older people. So please avoid large, large crowds if you can. The next thing I would say is use respiratory hygiene. If you have to sneeze, if you have to cough, please cover your mouth in your sleeve, not with your hands. Please avoid touching your hands and face after you've done this as well. And please, again, wash your hands. And lastly, if you feel sick, if you have any of these symptoms, which is high fever, uh, initially a dry cough or fatigue, please seek medical help early. If you've been exposed to someone who might have had the virus or been in contact, please stay at home to avoid spreading the virus to anyone else. Again, this is something serious, so we don't want to take it lightly. But those are just some helpful tips and reminders uh, for you guys as we navigate through this pandemic. I hope you guys have a great day and uh, stay safe. The Startup Life is powered by Canvas People. Startup Nation, my wife and mom are always getting on me about taking pictures of my daughter with my phone and never sharing it with them. They say I'm holding the pictures hostage, which I think is just absurd. But if I'm being honest, Startup Nation, I just forget all about those pictures. Also, with my busy schedule as an entrepreneur, the month of May always creeps up on me. And if I forget Mother's Day, trust me, I'm going to have bigger problems on my hands. But this year, I won't have that problem. That's because my friends at Canvas People have my back. CanvasPeople.com is where you can upload your photos from your phone and print them on canvases. Their site is easy to use and shipping is quick. They also have other items you can put your phone photos on, such as a nice custom tabletop to go in the office of your business and even NFL themed ones to support your favorite team. Trust me, Startup Nation, you're going to love Canvas People. And I have a special code that you can use to get an 11 by 14 Canvas People print for free. That's right, Startup Nation, free. This is a $76.99 value. All you have to do is pay for shipping and handling. Get your own 11 by 14 Canvas People print for free. Just visit canvaspeople.com, upload your photo, and enter this special promo code STARTUP. This is a special limited offer for today's listeners. So go to canvaspeople.com today and use the code STARTUP for your free print. So if you're ready to win Mother's Day or any other special occasion, remember my friends at canvaspeople.com where you can get a photo of your favorite people on great canvases. Startup Nation, we tell you all the time that no one does anything great on their own. That includes starting a business or a nonprofit, or even becoming a thought leader or an influencer. My point is that you need a team to do it successfully and responsibly. And that is why you should contact DR and Associates. Danielle and her team provide branding solutions, along with digital and social media marketing that provide tangible results you are looking for. No matter if you are a Fortune 500 company or an author looking to make an impact, DR and Associates needs to be part of your team. They are one of the few firms whose leadership has been recognized by Google, which is proof of concept that they are very good at what they do. Contact DR and Associates today to grow your online presence. The number is 615-933-3681, or you can visit their website at drandassociates.com. Also, make sure you follow their Facebook page as well. DR and Associates, providing real clients with real results. It's time to be about that life, the startup life. Here's your host, Dominic Lawson. All right, Startup Nation, I hope you're ready to receive some value today. My name is Dominic Lawson, and this is the Startup Life, the show for entrepreneurs and career-minded professionals. We have a big-time, big-time guest in the building today. He is the founder and CEO of of Solid Power. He's also the founder and board chairman of Rocor. And Solid Power has an amazing story, Startup Nation. And it has the backing of, get this, 
Ford Motor Company, NASA, BMW, Samsung, and more. And so it's definitely one you want to keep your eyes on. He is the one and only Doug Campbell. How's it going, Doug? It's going good, Dominic. Happy to, he- happy to be here. Awesome stuff. Are you ready to pour some knowledge into Startup Nation today? I am indeed. All righty, let's do it. As always, Startup Nation, my name is Dominic Lawson. This is the Startup Life. So, Doug, first things first, man, let's get this party started off right. Kind of share with us your story on your path to entrepreneurship up until this point. Yeah, absolutely. I'm born and raised in uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico. Lived there until I was roughly about 30. Kind of had an in- interesting background. Didn't didn't go to college straight out of school. Just sort of, you know, worked in restaurants and then discovered a, a passion for athletics, uh, specifically okay. cycling. Right. Uh, ended up pursuing a career as a professional mountain biker in the, in the late 90s. Um, this is notable because that's actually when in hindsight, there was a lot of uh, nefarious things going on in, in cycling at the at the time, as it of course, absolutely. pertains to things like like doping. And so, at some point, I reached right. a point where I, you know, I concluded, huh, I might want to go back to school and uh, go get a real job. Uh, I did. Uh, graduated uh, with a couple degrees from the University of Mexico. Relocated uh, to Colorado, which I uh, am still here in Colorado, along the Front Range. Fantastic uh, place to be if you want to want to be an entrepreneur. And uh, worked. Worked a little bit as an engineer, but just sort of realized that, uh, you know, I'm really, I, I have a passion for kind of pursuing opportunities. And uh, I entered into the uh, sort of entrepreneur world in 2011. That's when I left my last quote unquote real job. Mm-hmm. And haven't looked back since. That's the uh, very condensed version of my background. Thank you for sharing that. You know, I want to hear a little bit, if I could just ask a follow up, if I could. Tell me a little bit about yep. growing up in Albuquerque. Kind of tell me, you know, what kind of kid were you? Kind of share that story with me a little bit. Tell me about your parents. Tell me what kind of kid you were, <laughs> kind of student you were, stuff like that. Yeah, well, you know, I was always a pretty rambunctious kid. Okay. Um, you know, now Albu- Albuquerque is kind of an interesting, well, really New Mexico is interesting in the sense that it is, it is very different from really any other state in the, gotcha. in the U S I know a lot of people like to say that, but New Mexico really is different. It has its own history. You know, it's got this sort of Spanish history that that's quite deep. And so it tends to, it's got its own very unique culture, but it's, you know, it's also in, in all fairness, it's a relatively poor state. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, you sort of combine that, but it's, it's got a lot of wealth of, of sort of outdoor opportunities. Um, you know, I grew up really as an outdoor kind of guy, my family, you know, sort of built their own cabin in some mountains near, near Albuquerque. And man, I just, I love being out there just kind of roaming the hills as, a, you know, I was, as a student, I was good at first, but you know, I, I, I'm definitely not good with rules. Um, and that enough. doesn't work well with <laughs> when you're a teenager, <laughs> gotcha. which I currently have two teenagers. Gotcha. Um, so, you know, there's a reason I didn't go straight into college because, you know, frankly speaking, I kind of, I kind of goofed off a little too much in, in high school and it, it really wasn't until post high school that I kind of, kind of started to, to walk the straight and narrow and think about, uh, you know, what it is I wanted to right. sort of do. Uh, but you know, one of the things that I, that I'm really proud of is, you know, I certainly don't come from money, um, put myself through, through school. Um, and I've always just kind of, you know, put your head down and, 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 and work hard. Uh, and that that boded well, both in terms of my athletic career, but now in my entrepreneurial career. It's 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 a lot of lot of stinking work. And you know, my, my background, n- nothing really handed to me. Uh, in hindsight, has uh, has has treated me well. I hear that. Well, so I, I want you to definitely know that you should feel right at home here on the startup life, uh, as we are definitely ones who do not like to follow rules as entrepreneurs. So I definitely appreciate you. Uh, sharing all of that as well. Really quickly, were you ever like a tinkerer? Like, like did you tinker with things as a kid? You know, it's it's funny. Um, not 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 as much. Um, okay. And that's where I'm not I'm not as I'm not a stereotypical engineer. What I am, okay. you know, I'm I'm like a book smart engineer. I tend to pick things up pretty quick. But it's kind of funny as I as I got into my engineering career. Um, I, I sort of realized I'm not that good of an engineer. Like I'm smart enough to to understand what people are doing. Understood. But I just, I just don't have the patience gotcha. uh, to sort of tinker. What, what I'm passionate enough is, frankly speaking, is answering, you know, a- the questions of why are we even doing this in the first place? Where's Understood. this going? What's our the goal? Picture, What's our right? objective? Right. Exactly. Absolutely. Okay. Cool deal. Thank you, Doug, for all of that for sure. I, I want to ask you this, and I just want to remind Startup Nation as well, because when you share your story. Uh, it, it reminds us that, like, look, a lot of times in society, Startup Nation, we're, we're kind of fed this, this, you know, this, this notion that, like, you have to have it all figured out at 25, and that's the only way to be successful, right? 
and, and people feel like as if you know Zuckerberg or people like Zuckerberg is the is the rule as opposed to the exception. So, Doug, I definitely appreciate your transparency and sharing your background with us for sure. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree with that wholeheartedly. I've got, <clears throat> I've actually, as we speak, I've got an 18 year old son who's, frankly speaking, not not a whole lot different than me. Gotcha. And, you know, he's he, he's looking at college and he doesn't know what he wants to do other than he knows he wants to play soccer. And gotcha. so my, my objective is to find him a soccer program. And I continually reinforce, don't, don't stress about it. You don't need to have your life figured out. As long as you're, you're armed with the appropriate tools, like get a good education, right. um, you know, hopefully don't leave that, edu- you know, that uh, uh, academic institution, you know, with a mound of debt. Absolutely. And then you'll figure it out. And don't stress about it. So, Doug, you, you have this doctrine or this belief or you, you have this thing that you talk about as far as like not being a douchebag CEO. So I'm curious <laughs> to know what this is. What's a douchebag CEO and how do I not become one? So, um, <laughs> you I know, had to uh, ask, Doug. So, you know, I had to ask. <laughs> yeah. So the funny, the, the history there is, uh, I was interviewing a, or I was being interviewed by a journalist here locally at the Boulder Daily Camera. Okay. And I, I think I let flip something about, you know, something. She was grilling me about how long I was going to continue to run these two businesses. And I was sort of like, I don't know, you know, it's, it's really hard. I don't want to, I don't want just any old douchebag in here running the place. <laughs> and she printed that. Gotcha. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. And, yeah, so that's kind of the background, but honestly, I've, I've kind of embraced it. And, and, and what I mean by that is, you know, as I've gone through my professional career, absolutely, I've encountered uh, p- people in positions of leaderships that I would sort of classify as a quote unquote douchebag. And okay. what I mean by that is an individual who is extremely self-serving, who, you know, lacks authenticity um, and, you know, isn't, isn't sort of both true to themselves and true to their, true to their team. And, and at the end of the day, I have not, you know, I have not seen douchebags be successful. Um, and so that's really what I meant by that was that, you know, the, the, the companies that I founded, you know, through blood, sweat and tears, I'll be damned if I was going to hand that off to, you know, someone that, that really comes in with a very kind of self-serving, somewhat narcissistic, you know, approach to things. And, you know, looks at, looks at people as, as just tools and stepping stones to, you know, achieving their personal goals. That's really my, my sort of definition. Um, and that's, that's really what I meant by that. And again, uh, at the time I was somewhat shocked that that made it to print, but um, in hindsight, I think it's quite funny and I've come to embrace it. I mean, to be fair, it's probably clickbait, right? You know, probably <laughs> a bit of clickbait you know, for sure. Cause it, it definitely caught my eye in my prep, right? Uh, so, but I, I appreciate you you sharing that for sure. But let me ask you this quick follow up because you talked about you know running two companies, running Solid Power, running Rocor, and stuff like that. And I saw that you started both of those companies at the same time. So that is correct. Of, yeah, kind of walk me through that. Like, what was the thinking behind starting them both at the same time? And talk about some of those challenges you you ran into 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 not just running two companies at the same time but starting them at the same time absolutely well what it really comes down to is when i when i entered you know the entrepreneurial world i really did so with nothing uh, i did not um i did not you know decide okay here's the idea i'm going to do this uh it was more like i'm tired of working for other people mm. um you know i i'm ready to do my own thing and I don't know, I don't know what the heck I'm going to do. I'll figure it out. Um, that's literally how I entered into my, my entrepreneurial journey back in, back in 2011. So being an opportunist, in some respects, you might say uh, at that stage, a little bit of a kid in the candy store in the sense that, you know, various business opportunities were presenting themselves. And at that time, it's, it's easy to entertain multiple business opportunities because they're just, they're just someone's idea or some, you know, something jotted down on a, on a piece of paper. So, uh, and of course, like, like any sort of investor, if you will, because in that case, I was investing my time, right. um, you know, you, you want to have a diverse portfolio because I don't know if this is this idea I have is going to work out or that idea. And that's, that's literally what happened. And um, as I jokingly like to say, it's a little bit of a case of be careful what you wish for mm. um, because Rocor, Rocor was really founded as kind of a, a team first approach. In other words, I pulled together a bunch of bunch of folks I'd worked to many, many years, got along with, we clicked, we complimented one another. And it was a sort of a, Hey, 
let's, let's work together. I don't know what we're going to do. We'll figure it out. You do good work. We compliment one another. Let's just see what happens. Solid power was more of a technology first. It was a, uh, you know, a couple of professors approached me. We've got an interesting idea. You've got some background in this. Maybe let's make a business. And that, that's what happened. And early on, it was an easy thing to juggle. Uh, but, uh, you know, a couple of years later, as both companies are starting to head off on their, you know, growth trajectories, they, you know, you're looking in the rearview mirror and thinking, huh, I didn't expect that would happen. Gotcha. Thank you for sharing that. And it's funny you mentioned that because a lot of times we talk to Startup Nation that a company, you know, we always talk about the cliche, my company is my baby or something like that. But in a lot of ways, it really is. It's like you birth this idea and until it goes on that growth trajectory that you talked about, you have to nurse it and feed it and help it to walk and help it to learn how to walk and stuff like that. And then over time, it starts to kind of take, you know, uh, kind of take care of itself a little bit. Not all, not fully right because like any five-year-old or seven-year-old you still have to take care of them right but they're a little bit more right. independent right uh and, and so yeah. talk about that perspective right from going from you know ideation until the point now where it's kind of like okay this thing is kind of going somewhere kind of talk about that journey a little bit like how does that make you you know i guess feel in the sense of like man wow yeah. we're actually we're actually on our way to doing something really special here right i i think your analogy is perfect and uh you know i've got I've got two kids, two sons, and, a, and, and of course, two companies. Right. Um, you're absolutely right. A at the infancy stage uh, for the companies, <laughs> much mm -hmm. like infants, right. um, they need constant, constant care and feeding. And absent of that constant care and feeding, you know, they're not going to be successful. Um, and it, and it, is, it is painful. It is, it is, you know, there are moments of doubt enter into you. Um, you know, in, in hindsight, I, I grossly underestimated how difficult it was going to be to get both of these companies off the ground. Um, it, it, you know, it took literally blood, sweat and tears and, and really my own capital in many cases to get them off the ground. And then to your analogy, absolutely. A a over time, they start to become self-sustaining. And then, I mean, I'll, I'll continue with this analogy in the case of Rocor, which, you know, I, I left as full-time CEO at the end of 2018. It's sort of okay. like, well, that, that company went off to college and, you know, occasionally it, <laughs> calls me up and tells me how things are going and, <laughs> right. you know, asks, asks, asks me for money because, <laughs> you know, they need to. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> but, Absolutely. But, Absolutely. Thank you. I didn't mean to cut you off. I'm sorry. I, I was laughing at what you were talking no, no, no. about because it makes a complete sense. <laughs> it makes complete no, sense. But, but, and, and, you know, just, just like with my kids, of course, you know, I look at them and I'm just, you know, incredibly proud. For sure. Um, you know, and, and, and on the one hand, I, you know, I say, yeah, they're, they're my companies. I don't mean that in a ownership sense right? in that they're mine, but right. in the sense that, wow, I, I did that. I was responsible for that. Um, you know, I was, I, you know, I helped facilitate, you know, now hundred and some people with great jobs and, and, and the impact that that has on them and their families. And it's just immensely immensely proud of that. Thank you for sharing that. And Startup Nation, once again, we're talking to Doug Campbell, founder and CEO of Solid Power and also board chairman at Rocor. And so one of the things I wanted to talk to Doug about today, Startup Nation, is solid power because we're, 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 you know, we're always talking about in a constant space of renewable energy and things of that nature. And, and Doug, you have some technologies there that are really catching the eyeballs of some really big companies and they've started to kind of partner with you in that regard. So if you would, it's kind of a two-part question. Tell me a little bit about Solid Power and why is it that you're, you're finding success and finding partners for Solid Power? What are they seeing in Solid Power that say, you know what, we need to make sure this works? Yeah. Well, you know, first and foremost, uh, we, are, we are right in the center of an industry that is undergoing transformational change. So, Absolutely. and this is specifically the, the transportation industry. For sure. Vehicle electrification is coming. Um, and, uh, it's coming in a big way and this is, this is really shaking up the industry. Right. Um, it, you know, it is both a risk and an opportunity for everyone, both, you know, OEMs, suppliers within the industry, as well as new entrants into the industry like solid power. And the reason for that is, you know, from a consumer standpoint, the, the beauty and elegance of an electric vehicle is its simplicity. Um, you know, you've, 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 you've got a battery and, you know, powertrain and a, and a, and a body and a chassis and some tires. Um, you know, the total cost of ownership, you know, that, that, that uh, consumers can realize is substantially less than a traditional gas combustion engine. So that, that's what's so exciting. 
the right. um, the risk within the supply chain is everything is contained within this magic box called a battery, right. um, because that's 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 your fuel. That's you know that that that's really it dictates everything, uh, including things like the range of the vehicle as well as as well as the uh, the cost of the vehicle, which are the two primary sort of pain points within th- that particular market. I think as 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 your listeners and everyone who just casually observes this industry you know that that what's dominated is is lithium ion right um what is perhaps less known is that lithium ion has actually been around 20 25 years um at least commercially um and it's it's really starting to hit its ceiling in in really what it can deliver uh, in terms of energy it, it it's hitting its theoretical limits um and so as as manufacturers auto manufacturers you know start to look at hey we still need significant improvements in in the range which is you could think of as directly proportional to the uh, uh, to the energy of the battery we've got to look at it at entirely new technologies and that's really where a company like solid power comes into play uh, we're working on what's called solid state batteries uh, it's a pretty simple definition uh, okay. as the name implies uh, uh, you are you are replacing the liquid electrolyte that you see in conventional lithium ion and you're replacing it with a solid Ion conducting material, and the, the broadly speaking, the why you should care is twofold. Uh, one is higher energy, and it gets there <clears throat> again at the risk of getting mildly technical. Uh, it gets there through the through the use of different uh, electrodes, most notably metallic lithium, um, which you don't see in uh, in uh, lithium ion, um, and so that's that's where you you see this potential stepwise increase in, in energy, you know, 50, 75, 100 percent increase. Um, you know, there's a recent recent podcast that I was listening to that had uh, they were interviewing Elon Musk, and you know, Elon Musk I'm sure gets plenty of questions around you know when are you going to double triple the energy of your cells, and he says right. very simply, uh, not until lithium metal as an anode becomes a reality. Um, so that's that's kind of what we're doing, okay. and then the other value proposition being safety. Uh, we are all aware of you know the thermal runaway uh, uh, concerns around lithium ions, such as what happened with the the Samsung Note 7 uh, way Absolutely. back when, um, that's in, uh, all but eliminated in, in solid state because that that sort of ignition source, which is that volatile flammable electrolyte, that's gone. Gotcha. And so that's great from a product reliability, but in terms of cost, you can think of a safer battery system as a as a lower cost battery. So that's why people sort of beat a, beat a path to our doorstep. Um, we are far and away one of the industry leaders um, and so that's why we're able to attract um, partnerships from, you know, entities like BMW and Ford. Right, for sure, for sure. Thank you for sharing that. Now, Doug, you know, I want to stay, you know, in the this part of the conversation because I'm always fascinated. Like, look, we have entrepreneurs and startup founders who start companies all the time, right? And they start companies like, you know, a cupcake company, a restaurant, stuff like that. But you, then you come across some entrepreneurs that take on a really big idea and that their startup idea is really one of those things that kind of moves society forward. And when you're talking about renewable energy and battery and lithium ion and stuff like that, you're, you're kind of taking on um, a, a big thing here when it comes to the renewable energy space and stuff like that. Have you ever talked to your team about like the, 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 you know, you know, the, not necessarily the power of what you're doing. I'm trying to figure out the right word. I'm trying to say the the perspective, the, the of impact. You're doing it, how important? The, yes, that's the word I'm looking for. Thank you. The impact that you're making, not just on you know being cash flow positive and stuff like that, but you're making an impact on society. Have you ever talked to your team about that impact? And what does those conversations sound like? Oh, it's. I mean, that's a that's a daily conversation. Okay. I mean, our staff, our staff. If you're not motivated by the impact on you know, the industry and, and really society as a whole, frankly speaking, you're probably better off somewhere else. Um, mm-hmm. Because, yeah, I mean, the people that are here, they're not just collecting paychecks. They're here because they're passionate about what we're doing. You know, obviously, there are a lot of scientists and engineers, so they're, you know, uniquely qualified technically to, to do the, the work um, that they're doing. But also the, the passion. You, you've got to, you know, and you, you've got to be passionate about this. And frankly, I would say, and the, and the same goes for Rocor as an aerospace company. Similar, similar uh, transformation that's occurring within that industry. Right. 
And the people that show up asking for jobs are, are first and foremost, they're passionate about the mission, first and foremost. And then, uh, oh, the fact that I get paid for this is, uh, you know, somewhat secondary. Right. Somewhat. <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, but no, it is uh, that that is that is in our DNA. That messaging is something we talk about on a daily basis, um, and is and is frankly speaking, what what gets us up in the morning. For sure, for sure. Thank you for sharing all of that. For sure. So I I know a lot of times when you're in a leadership position, Doug, that you know a lot of times you are focused on the task at hand and you are focused on the mission and stuff like that. But sometimes there are things that happen in life to where it's outside of your control, outside of your purview. And, uh, and people are still looking to you as that leader. I mean, I don't need to say what's going on in the world right now and stuff like that. And, and so when you have these moments that are outside of the company, outside of what the mission is of the company and your team is looking for leadership, from you what do you say to him what advice do you give them what's what's the goal there when you know your team is looking you know morale seems a little low and they're looking for that leadership what are, what are some of those things you're talking to your team about well i think um well obviously it's very very germane to the the current situation where we're, sure. we're dealing with the coronavirus crisis right. um right now and uh, I mean, literally, we're having conversations about that. What are we as a company doing to, right. to protect our employees, et cetera? And so we're certainly implementing uh, those, those kind of processes. But obviously, you know, the, that's out of my hand. I mean, right. an act of God, if you will. Of course. Um, you know, <clears throat> the, the best I can do as a leader is, is, is really just sort of step up and, and A, remind people why we're doing what we're doing, right. and B, Con- convey to everyone that, that we as an organization and myself as the leader of that organization are doing everything within our power to, 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 you know, sort of control our own destiny and, and implement, you know, whatever, whatever controls and processes we, we can. Um, you know, I'm a, I'm a firm believer in that, you know, at, at the end of the day, it's, it's ultimately the leader's responsibility uh, really for everything. Um, right. So, uh, you know, everything from, from, uh, you know, managing current crises like what we're having today to making sure that you've got a, a healthy and safe, safe work environment. Absolutely. Um, so, you know, that's, that's kind of it, the, it, it, it in a nutshell and really owning that and owning that messaging. Uh, 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 messaging's key. For sure. Yeah, for sure. Absent, absent of messaging, people will come up with their own message and sometimes it's, <laughs> Well, not, the, not the one you want disseminating absolutely. through your organization. And absolutely. And that can be extremely dangerous uh, from time to time, as we've seen throughout yeah. history. And, and thank you for sharing that, Doug, because I wanted to convey to Startup Nation that sometimes, whether we ask for this or not, uh, so, you know, that leadership piece, you know, it kind of stretches beyond the scope of the work that we're actually there from nine to five to do every day. Uh, you know, like I said, whether we ask for it or not, it's just kind of thrust upon it. And so I appreciate you sharing that and your philosophy and advice on uh, in that regard, for sure. I want to ask you this really quickly, because, you know, I know that you are uh, a New Mexico Lobos basketball fan. And <laughs> and, and, and of that same vein, uh, you know, you know, speaking of the coronavirus and stuff like that, uh, you know, we, we know that the NCAA finally decided to cancel NCAA tournament games and stuff like that. But many of them are saying that, you know, they waited too long. They, you know, we saw the NBA, the NHL and many other profo- uh, professional teams cancel stuff before the NCAA did. And some people are asking whether the NCAA has a leadership uh, issue in that regard. I just want to ask you this really quickly. Uh, if NCAA were to come to Doug Campbell and say, you know, we're, we're, we're you know, we have this perception of doing something wrong in our leadership and stuff like that. And you were consulting them. What, what kind of advice would you give them? Would you, would you, would, it, would you have them change anything or would you say they're doing everything right? I guess I want to know what your take is on that. Yeah, well, uh, interesting question. I mean, I think simplistically speaking, I would just say, you know, uh, uh, whatever, you know, the, the leader of your organization, I mean, they, they need to own it. They need to be responsible for, for everything, actions, as well as communication. I'm actually not aware that there was some criticism on the NCAA in terms of dragging their feet um, mm-hmm. in, in, in canceling. Uh, I, I, would, I would argue that they had a bit more time. I mean, uh, uh, NCAA tournament wouldn't have started until what, 
uh, next week. Yeah. Something um, like that. Yeah. So, so it's not, it, it's not like they had, you know, active game, you know, games actively ongoing, whereas the NBA did, uh, at the end of the day, they, they, they made the right call. Um, and you know, for me personally, obviously I'm disappointed. This is my favorite month for sports of course, uh, out of the year. Right. Um, but <laughs> at, at the end of the day, I think right now we've got more important things to, to, uh, to consider, but to your original question, it's, it's, it's sort of what I said before the, you know, Leaders got to own it, got to take responsibility for, for everything from making decisions to, you know, disseminating those decisions. And if it's not done properly, that's 100% at the, at the feet of the leadership. I hear that. I hear that. Thank you for sharing all of that for sure. And Doug, you often talk about this notion of parallel entrepreneurs, entrepreneurism as well. Kind of explain what that is to Startup Nation. I was curious about that as well. Well, so, you know, full credit, that was uh, 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 a, a colleague of mine coined me as a uh, parallel entrepreneur, and it was okay. to contrast contrast with the well-known reference of serial entrepreneur, a serial entrepreneur being, gotcha. you know, someone who does one startup at a time, exits, starts over, so on and so forth. Um, <laughs> hadn't heard the term parallel entrepreneur, but in effect, we, we sort of discussed it, which was... Um, Whereas others might do, you know, startups one at a time, I do them in parallel, uh, which is precisely what happened with with both uh, with both Solid Power and, and Rocor. Now there was a limit, um, so you know, unlike Elon Musk with SpaceX and, and Tesla, um, it was not my goal to continue to run these two companies in perpetuity. Um, and in fact, you know, I might I might argue at, at some you know in some respect, perhaps I ran them too long. Uh, because, you know, these both organizations are different, um, require, you know, sort of dedicated uh, leadership, et cetera. Um, and at some point, you know, I just sort of reached the point at which I, I, I can't do both jobs sort of effectively. But that's, that's basically what the what the parallel entrepreneur label means. I cert- wouldn't necessarily recommend it. Um, it is challenging. Um, but at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's been successful for us. All right, Startup Nation. So we're going to go ahead and take a quick break. We got to pay some bills. Once again, my name is Dominic Lawson, and this is The Startup Life. This episode is powered by a Personal Revolution podcast. Startup Nation, have you been stuck inside wondering how to take charge of your life? Is there something you want to do but haven't been able to do yet? In Personal Revolution, best-selling author and life coach Allison Task helps you take control of your life with inspiration and humor so that you move from where you are now to where you want to be and have fun doing it. It's like having a personal coach whispering in your ear. This three month podcast course, along with bonus episodes each month will help you create a clear vision for what you want out of life, remove the frustrating blocks that are holding you back, develop a detailed action plan that will drive you to where you want to be and build a network that will help you create your future. And at $4.99 per month, the Personal Revolution podcast comes with a personal workbook and real time access to a community of other change makers working toward their goals with positivity, possibility, and momentum. And for a limited time, all of this is available to you for free. That's right, Star Automation, free. Download the Himalaya app in your app store, look up Personal Revolution, and enter promo code REVOLUTION at checkout to get your first month absolutely free. So if you're ready to go after a better life, you're ready for Personal Revolution. Startup Nation, make sure you stay tuned at the end of this episode for an exclusive trailer for the Personal Revolution podcast. Tresta powers this episode of the Startup Life. Okay, Startup Nation, I want to talk to you about our sponsor, Tresta. Tresta is an app for iPhone and Android that lets you do business calling and texting from anywhere. I know so many entrepreneurs that are still using their their personal phone number for business calls. It can get complicated drawing the line between your personal and professional life. Startup Nation, this is the best business phone app out there. Whether you just need a business phone number or if your team is ready for a complete business phone system, Tresta is totally flexible and can grow with your business. And it's all unlimited. Calling, 
texting, and all of the powerful call management features like auto attendance, call recording, user groups, and more for just $15 per user per month. With Tresta, there's no contract, and you don't need any special hardware, just your smartphone you're already using. Tresta is easy to configure, so you can set everything up yourself, all online avoiding all the hassle and high overhead costs of setting up a traditional business phone system, which is important because as entrepreneurs, we are always trying to cut cost and time. They're often a 30-day free trial so you can see if Tresta's virtual phone system is right for you. Communicate smarter and more efficiently with Tresta. Start now at Tresta.com forward slash Startup Life. That's T-R-E-S-T-A dot com forward slash Startup Life. The link is there in the show notes if you're listening on the podcast. Tresta, business communication simplified. Startup Nation, do you have friends and loved ones that you want to do something nice for, but maybe they live in the next city, the next state, or even halfway around the world? Well, I have a solution for you. Koya is the new and best way to let your friends and family know you're thinking of them. Choose a friend, record a message, and hide it in a location that they are likely to visit and give them a clue. When they arrive, your message will instantly appear. You can even send them a gift. Best of all, the app is completely free. Get Koya.com to download it now. That's K-E-T-K-O-Y-A.com. Or check the link in the show notes. Koya, show you care when you can't be there. So welcome back, Startup Nation, as we continue our conversation with Doug Campbell, Chief Executive Officer at Solid Power, and also co-founder and board chair of Rocor. In Startup Nation, Doug has an amazing blog, the Entrepreneurial Dysfunction uh, blog. You can catch that on entrepreneurialdysfunction.com. We have a link there in the show notes for easy access. So Doug, if you would, man, just kind of share with us some of the the blog content that you share on there and, and what you're hoping people get from it. Absolutely. Well, so first, firstly, it's relatively new. Okay. Um, so if you if you go to the site, the blog content's still a little bit light. Okay. Um, but the intent, uh, and we will we'll be rolling out content periodically. But really, the intent is really to share, um, sort of in the trenches experiences. Um, okay. everything from you know sort of your original question, which is what what is a douchebag leader, <laughs> um, and you know <laughs> how can that be you know negatively impact, um you know, an organization. A lot of it's just, um, you know, just sort of uh, experiences that I've gained um, as an entrepreneur, both both good and bad. I mean, one one idea uh, for uh, some topics we're going to be discussing on is fundraising. Okay. Um, you know, and of course, that's a pretty common one. Uh, unique one that, uh, it, well, I would say somewhat unique to me is that I have experience in both uh, raising money out of out of VCs as well as raising money out of out of the uh, federal government, and they both have their pros and cons, um, and uh, both both short term and and long term, um, and so those are some some topics that we we'd sort of talk about topics around you know what what my entrepreneurial journey is why actually sometimes having what I refer to as a nonlinear career is actually advantageous because you've got a lot of interesting life experiences that on paper might not seem super relevant, but in terms of the life lessons that they provide actually become, come, you know, quite, quite useful, quite helpful. You know, my, my background as a, as a professional athlete, specifically as a cyclist um, has been extremely helpful just in the sense that that is an extremely difficult sport that takes years and years of, of training and racing. Absolutely. That's how business is. Uh, success in business does not come quickly. And if you don't have the patience and you, you know, you can't stick through it, you're just not going to be successful. And, you know, by coming in with that kind of experience, it's been, you know, it's proven to be very, very invaluable. So that's really the intent with the blog is to share some of those. And, and, and also the fact that I'm still doing it. Um, I haven't exited from any, any of my businesses. It's not like I've got some huge net worth, um, still rely on a paycheck just like everybody else. Um, so, you know, we thought that was kind of a, kind of a unique perspective. I think that that's important to point out when you talked about, you still rely on a paycheck yourself. Cause I think a lot of times people hear the, the phrase or the, 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 you know, the, the, the acronym CEO and just I automatically say, Oh, he's a millionaire. He, he doesn't need all that money. You know, and so I'm, I'm glad you, you, you highlighted that point because just because you're a CEO of a company doesn't necessarily mean you're like, 
riding yeah. yachts every day and something like that, right? So <laughs> I appreciate if you. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, you're again, CEO means a lot of things. You're CEO of a large publicly traded company. You're probably doing pretty good. Right. You're CEO of a venture back company. You know, you're 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 being compensated at at you know market appropriate levels. Um, but the only way you get wealthy is if you there's some kind of exit. Um, okay. And, you know, that's that's the case with solid power in the case of Rocor, which has been on this incredible growth trajectory. Um, it's not like Rocor is paying out dividends. Uh, every all earnings get you know folded right back into the company to to facilitate growth. Um, and so you're absolutely right. It's it's uh, you know hopefully at some point there's a financial windfall. But, uh, um, you know, as of today, it's it's just a function of letting the letting the businesses do what they need to do. And hopefully success comes at some point in the future. I understand that. Quick follow up. And I, and I don't want you to give all the information out, uh, of, of, you know, from your blog that you're going to be writing sooner or later. But if you could, because we talk about raising money from VCs and a little bit about like from the government and stuff like that. What are one, one to two of the biggest differences between, you know, raising money with VCs as opposed to with the, the federal government? What are one of those big differences? Oh, it's, it's uh, huge differences. The obvious okay. one being is that you raise money from a VC, they take equity in your company. They, you know, sort of like what you see on Shark Tank. Right. Uh, they, they own a chunk of your company and, uh, you know, you don't, that, that by and large does not end. You typically do not quote unquote divorce investors. That's, right. that's forever. Right. Um, federal government. No, they don't take a board seat. We call it non-dilutive capital, mm-hmm. um, which, which sounds great. Uh, but you know, challenge there is that, um, oftentimes that money comes not necessarily very quickly. Uh, you know, money out of the federal government is very, very slow. Um, and in many cases you, you can't necessarily do whatever you want, uh, with, mm-hmm. with money out of the federal government. So that's, that's kind of the, sort of the difference. Whereas with VC money, Hey, here's my business model. Here's what I'm thinking. Great. I'll write you a check right now. Five minutes later, I'm exaggerating for a reason, but you know, right. uh, and, and away we go, we get a term sheet, we sign it. Boom. There you go. You're moving. Um, so that, that's really the, the difference. And, um, if I look at my, our, you know, my two companies with Rocor never have taken in investment dollars, never have taken in money from VCs. That was exactly. by design because we wanted the company to be 100% held uh, by uh, the management employees, which it is today. Um, but it has, you know, it took a while to grow um, and, you know, had to kind of move in, in, in slightly different directions to sort of get to where it is at today. In contrast, Solid Power absolutely had to raise um, money because you don't bootstrap a battery company. You can right. bootstrap a satellite hardware company. You, you cannot with batteries. It takes yeah. a lot of capital. You've got to move quick. And um, that's why you've got to go in, the, in, that, um, in that manner. But as a consequence here at Solid Power, I have a board of directors. So even though I'm the CEO, I have a boss. My boss right. is board of directors. Right. At Rocor. I am the chairman of the board. I guess I'm the boss. Thank you for sharing that. I'm glad you pointed out that distinction between the two. And just so I make sure I heard you correctly with the VC, you know, you know, you, you know, you make your pitch, they cut you a check and you, you know, you, you go forth and be married. I mean, obviously they take an equity piece in the company, but at the very least, there's not a lot of stipulations And with the federal government is a flip side to where true enough, they don't take an equity position, but there's like, I guess there's some, some some stipulations and stuff that you know you have to follow and you can't just like just go and be mayor like with the vc so i appreciate you sharing that doug i want to ask you this if you could go back in time and have a conversation with somebody uh in the past and you could ask them one question what question would you ask them and and who would that person be (laughs) um you know i'm a i'm a huge fan of history um and uh and so I'm going to, I'm going to sort of reach to a historical figure. And, okay. and um, so, so I think the, the person I would go back to would be Winston Churchill, um, you know, former gotcha. prime minister of, of the right. UK. And, and, and I'd go back to sort of the darkest times um, that he was facing, um, you know, when he, he was having, you know, bombs, you know, raining onto, onto his, uh, his country um, from, um, Nazi Germany at the time. And I think, you know, I think things were looking pretty dire. 
Um, and here, you know, here was a guy who was stepping up and, and, you know, really bringing calm to, you know, to the population of, of the UK at the time. And I'd, you know, my questions to him were, would be really around what really was going on in, in his mind, you know, um, obviously from the outside looking in a pretty dire situation. I assume he recognized that what, you know, what, what was he playing out in his head and, and then how was he translating that? into you know his very stoic messages that he was giving to the to the british people um obviously at the end of the day uh you know they weren't invaded um and you know uh nazi germany was defeated but you know in the early 1940s uh that was not the case and they were they were there was a time where you know britain was it right. against you know the rest of europe that that yeah. nazi germany had overrun things were not looking good. The U S was still on the sidelines. Talk about having your back up against the wall. Right. Wow. What did that feel like? For sure. Thank you for sharing that. I think you and only one other person have ever said Winston Churchill, but I definitely understand why for that reason that you gave. So I appreciate all of that for sure. Doug, what's your entrepreneurial superpower and why? (laughs) My entrepreneurial superpower is level-headedness. Um, You know, one of one of the things that I've seen in 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 other entrepreneurs, and in some respects, it's personality traits. But it is, you know, um, folks that get way too excited when things are going good, and they get way too bummed out when mm-hmm. when things are not going so good. And for me, that's a that's an emotional roller coaster. I just don't want to ride. And so I learned early on, and call it a survival tactic um, or whatever. But you know, when bad news comes in, take it in strides. Um, you know, usually there are options, usually things, you know, things will work themselves out, um, and just keep a level head about you. And similarly, when, you know, exciting things are happening, you know, let's, let's not get drunk with excitement here, people. Right. Um, and it's just kind of ride those waves. And, and frankly speaking, I think it serves me well, I'm still in the saddle almost a decade later. Um, and, uh, and it's just, it's just keeping perspective and keeping a level head because as an entrepreneur, you're going to have the lowest, the lows and the highest, the highs. And, uh, you know, if you're not careful, those will, those will, those will derail you. For sure. For sure. Thank you for sharing all of that for sure. And before I ask the last question, Doug, I just want to say thank you so much for coming on the Startup Life. You gave amazing value uh, from, you know, how not to be a douchebag CEO, but also how, you know, uh, stand, you know, uh, being a leader uh, in times where things may seem a bit dire. And I, obviously, I can see why you would pick uh, Winston Churchill as your person for sure. So I'm actually going to turn the microphone over to you because there's an entrepreneur out there that's feeling either stuck in their business or they're afraid to even start. Give them some words of encouragement to take us on out today, Doug. Yeah, well, I think, um, you know, first and foremost, you, you, you've got to not only have a good idea, but you've got to have, you know, you've got to have a tangible, you know, market opportunity that, that you're addressing. You know, one of the, one of the follies that I find uh, in, in entrepreneurs and, and caveat being, obviously I, I tend to interact with technologists, you know, a lot of engineers and scientists, uh, generally speaking, I'm not going to cross paths with an entrepreneur that wants to do cupcakes as you, as you mentioned before. Um, and, 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 you know, one of the follies that I see is, is with engineers and scientists, it's, it's usually an idea first, Hey, I've got this great idea and I will oftentimes admittedly somewhat flippantly respond with, why should I care? Well, I mean, look at my idea. Isn't this a great idea? I've solved this problem through blah, blah, blah. Right. Uh, no, I don't care. Why should I care? What, you know, what, what market, you know, uh, problem are, are you legitimately solving? And from my perspective, that, that is always the way I approach things first. It's always from a market standpoint first. And then, okay, what is the underlying solution, you know, that addresses that? Is it viable? Is it, hopefully it is not, you know, produced using unobtainium, uh, those kinds of things. And so, um, you know, for, for, you know, any technologist entrepreneur in the audience, that's really what I would encourage you to do. You know, we, we are trained to think about how to solve problems, but I would, I would emphasize first and foremost, why, you know, defining why you should even solve that problem in the first place. And if you can convince yourself of that why, then by all means, dig into the how. I hear that. 
I hear that. Thank you so much. And that's going to wrap up our time on the Startup Life. Did you enjoy being on the show, Doug? I did indeed. This was this was fantastic. If you want to let us know what you think about our show, have an idea for a show topic, or would like to advertise on our show, send us a message on the Startup Life Podcast Facebook page. And while you are there, like and follow our page as well. It's a great way for us to engage with you, Startup Nation, and really grow our community. The link is there in the show notes. Subscribe to the show as it can be heard on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher Radio, Spotify, or even on your Facebook timeline or any other platform you like to get your podcast. If you are listening on Apple Podcasts and you find our content valuable, please give us a five-star rating as it will help us climb the charts and help more people find our show. You can also listen to the show on the Startup Life Podcast new website. There you will find the all-new startup blog where I write on many topics that are interesting and helpful to you on your path to entrepreneurship. And hey, if you have an idea, be about that life, the startup life. Startup Nation, here's an exclusive trailer from Allison Task and her Personal Revolution podcast, the career and life coach that has been featured on Good Morning America, The Today Show, The Early Show, USA Today, and many more publications. Check it out. Hi, my name is Allison Task, and I am the host of Personal Revolution. Are you ready to be happy and do that thing you always wanted to do? Well, I am thrilled to announce that I have now made available for free the Personal Revolution podcast course. This course is based on my best-selling book, and it is now yours for free wherever you like to listen to podcasts. It includes 10 original episodes with plenty of never-released-before content, and then it includes a premium version. For $4.99 a month, you will get a customized workbook. You'll get access to a prior private community on Himalaya, and you'll have just-in-time audio drop-ins from me again in the community on Himalaya. Just go to Himalaya.com, look up Personal Revolution, and type in Revolution to get your first month for free. I'll look forward to seeing you in the community. So Startup Nation, if you're ready for a personal revolution, go to the show notes and subscribe to the Personal Revolution Podcast. Oralex powers this episode of the Startup Life. Startup Nation, as a podcaster, radio host, and business owner, I know a thing or two about the need for your message to come through clearly to your target audience. The last thing you want when trying to close a big deal over the phone or giving a sales presentation in your conference room is to have the person you are talking to be distracted by either the fact that you sound like you're in a warehouse or an outside noise like a fire truck. Trust me, Startup Nation, I know this all too well from experience. And that is why Oralex has your back. Oralex Acoustics creates professionally tested products that you can trust in a commercial space or at home. Better office acoustics improves intelligibility when video conferencing or generic conversation reduces stress and helps build a proactive work atmosphere. From a home studio for my content creators to your office space downtown, your gear performs better in an acoustically treated room. Trust me, you are in good hands with Oralex as they are the number one brand in acoustics, providing trusted solutions for over 40 years. Also, you can download the Oralex Acoustic Treatment mobile app in the Apple or Google Play Store to give you specifically designed and instantaneous recommendations for various room types. Go to Oralex.com and use the promo code STARTUP in all caps for 10% off your entire order. The link is there in the show notes if you are listening to the replay on the podcast. So if you are ready to stop sounding like you're having a sales meeting in a sports arena, go with Oralex. Professional audio made simple.